What's up, everyone? Another episode of Wine Talk. I'm gonna let people come in. I'm gonna let the guests come in, the viewers, the audience, while I'm pouring this wine. Right now, you guys, show me what you're drinking. What kind of wine, what kind of juice, what kind of agua that you guys are drinking. What I'm drinking right now is the Galileo family, Chardonnay. Actually got it for my birthday. Yes, wine talk. <laughs> Actually got it from uh, as a birthday gift because a lot of people came over and celebrated my birthday, which is this past weekend. So I'm grateful for those who came out. And I'm also grateful for those who reached out and told me happy birthday. So thank you. New chapter, new life in my journey. Oh my gosh. Y'all are coming in fast. I love this. I love this. How was y'all weekend? Also, you guys, I do want to let you guys know throughout the segment, you can drop questions. Any questions, I will ask the host and she will give an answer. So anything, she's not prepared for anything like this. This is just a conversation that hopefully is meant to inspire somebody or encourage somebody throughout this crazy pandemic that's going on in the world right now. What I have on right now, I decided to dress up as a celebrity. The reason being is because she's so used to hosting celebrities and interviewing celebrities on red carpets. You know what I mean? So I felt like I had to play the opposite role so that way I could interview her. And I just thought it was a creative way, you know? You gotta keep people's attention, keep people's things. But if it's your first time doing uh, tuning into Wine Talk, I appreciate you guys coming in. It's just nothing but a platform to uplift and inspire through other people's journeys that might help you, you know what I mean, throughout your journey. Sometimes it's just confirmation. Sometimes it's just a little bit uh, a phrase or a statement that may catch your, your attention, and you could just sail on from that. Oh, we might have to get you on this show. Might have to get you on this show. Thank you guys for coming in. Oh, let me wave at you guys. We are going to be bringing in the infamous Queen G. Just want to say hi to everybody that's joining in right now. You know, I can't be that guy that doesn't acknowledge you guys. What kind of guy would I be? Right? Cheers. Cheers, you guys. Uh, hey, welcome. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for coming in to Wine Talk. You guys are blowing up right now. This is crazy. Uh, you can submit the request, Queen G. Oh, there you go. Perfect. So for we are going to bring in our special guest. She's an author, director, singer, writer, host. I mean, she's a, a, a mother with so many hats. A wife, you know what I mean? And we're going to see how she does this. How does she maintain a successful career by doing everything that she does? We're going to bring her in. Hi, everyone. Love is love. Yes, it is. Love is love. Hey. Hey. How's it going? Everything is amazing. Um, amazing. <laughs> and you look really, really dapper, as usual. <laughs> you know, I have, to, I have to bring it out and say, like, so she's so used to this. I'm also going to play the character so that way, you know, you get a better feel for the show. That's all I think. Right, 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 right. <laughs> and, you know, it's so interesting because... We're used to being the reverse roles of each other. So this is going to be an interesting night. <laughs> and I love the hat. Appreciate you wearing that. Thank hat. you. I love your hat. I was like, he is a hat guy. Let me go ahead and step my game up, make sure I wear my brim and, and put myself in that, you know what I'm saying, in that mode. And I got my drink. I got my drink. You know, yes, sir. Well, tell me, what are you drinking? What are you drinking? What's in the cup? I am drinking a Cosmopolitan with some, it has a few cherries in it and ice and, you know, I had to step my game up. It's you. It's you. Come on now. <laughs> right, right. I, I'm just saying, you know, you know. <laughs> The viewers that are tuning in, you guys, you can't ask questions. We will be asking questions throughout the segment. We don't want to dismiss you guys because we want you guys to get your question in so that way she may be able to answer it. So let me ask you, Queen G, how are you staying sane in this whole pandemic? Like, what are you doing to... 
to 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 ride the wave yeah right to ride the wave um basically i was already in seclusion um you as you know you know this but the audience may not know i just moved from las vegas as of since november so yes. me and texas we get along but we don't so i knew when i came out here this time because this is my second time living here that i had to come here with a mission you know right. and that it couldn't just be me sitting here with idle time right. um so i've been actually in isolation since november since i moved here wow yeah so the pandemic wasn't new but the good the the, the bad part was becoming my four kids teacher you know, that was the bad part, and it was really frustrating and a headache, and trying to get through this semester has been a nightmare for me. Oh. Um, that's keeping it real as a parent and as a mom, and all of a sudden you are uh, launched into this position as parent, teacher, referee, slash all these other things, chef, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> all You're these positions. <laughs> so you yeah, know that was that was that was the rough part but the good part i don't know if you could tell you might be able to tell because you know me but my skin is glowing um Ooh. what i did was <laughs> what i did was i took this time to um get into my health you know what i'm saying i i, I went on the um nutriverse system and it's wow. full of vitamins wow. and stuff like that and it's been working really well for me um so hey i'm like yes i feel better my energy level is up i feel like the vitamins are really saturating my system if you know what i mean i'm taking it daily and i'm doing the teas and stuff like that so i i feel i feel amazing i feel amazing you know i feel it i feel it through the phone yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yo, and, and for everybody that's tuning in there, I mean, skincare is definitely a big thing, especially when you're trying to be in front of the camera, because like you want to try to wear at least least makeup as possible to be natural right. and getting yourself together with the skincare and things like that. That's unbelievable. I have my little remedies too, but you know, it's drier over here. <laughs> right. But it has taught me, this pandemic taught me um, just even more the appreciation for family um, and staying, you know what I'm saying, within your core and what you have to do and the sacrifices. I've already kind of been making those kind of sacrifices. So it wasn't that much of a transition too much. But what I will say is that I have stepped into the ultimate position of focus because there was nothing that I could do but focus. It's like right. there's no distractions. Um, I didn't have to really get in the car and go anywhere, travel like I normally do. All And due to that fact, I just went in. You know what I'm saying? I went into this this focus zone. And that's been that's been hard, but it's also been powerful. You wow. know, it's been powerful. So... Um, I am grateful. When I tell you the uh, the amounts of changes that have been made since I left Vegas, you are going to bug out. Like, I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait. You know, I can't. It, it's, been, it's been a trip. Like, first of all, I, I wake up every day and I have to pinch myself because I'm like, is this real? You know, is this change so dramatically? Is this real? Like, look, hold on. <laughs> <Let me. laughs> you know, um, but I, I will say that God is God is amazing and faithful. And um, I'm not all overboard religious, but I do know that there is something bigger than all of us. I, that's my belief. And I believe that. You know, at this season in my life, that I have no fear anymore. You know, I used Amen. to be afraid to step into my greatness, if you know what right. I mean. But now, 
there is no limits to how far, how deep, how high um, that I can go. And that's just the way I feel, you know. Um, and and that's, that's you know, God, I've been blessed with a new car since I got here. Oh, Keith, let me tell you, so much, so much. Yes. You know? <laughs> so. I'm trying to catch up. I feel like every day I'm trying to catch up. <laughs> Ooh, you know, we, we always have our moments where we kind of like, we, we have those gaps and spaces in between, but I'm always watching you because I consider you one of my industry babies, you oh. know, and I say that because when I see someone develop from like the baby stages of their career to really, really like stepping up and maturing and seeing where you are now, I'm like, oh my God, like you are one of my industry babies because I, I knew the beginning. You know what I'm saying? We have cried together in one of my interviews. <laughs> right? <laughs> so it's like I see the growth and the change in you. I see the glow of you know, just wanting something bigger and greater in your life and more empowering. You're reaching for the stars. I can see it all over you. You have a really great ambiance over you. And here we go. I'm supposed to be, listen, let's, this is what we do all the time. We just block out everybody and we just go in. Right? <laughs> always, always. Right. I just wanted you to know that. You know, I just wanted to take the moment and tell you that I don't know what you're doing, but I see the change in you. Um, and I'm so grateful that you and I have gotten a chance to cross paths because, you know, I feel like you're either in a position where you're teaching somebody or they're teaching you or vice versa. Um, and I want to tell everybody, can I tell, can I tell them how we linked and stuff? How do we do can I tell them that? Okay, okay, okay. So, me and uh, Keith and met in Las Vegas, and it was during a time when I was probably doing a bunch of promoting and stuff like that. Um, I have my own business called Let's Go to Work Entertainment Network, and um, me and Keith and kind of crossed paths in Las Vegas. And once we met, oh my God, when I tell you, Keith, you were so supportive of my movement, like you were always there. When I would look up, I had I invite you. You were there, um, and I knew at that point you were eager for something. You were some eager, eager for something great. You were in that stage where you were a sponge and just taking it all in. You know what I'm saying? Always sharp, always stepping up to the plate, always networking, smiling, shaking hands. You know what I'm saying? Just going to that next level. A couple of times, uh, I accessed you in ways that you were least expected, like putting you on a red carpet and tell you to host it. Remember that? Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what to do on that. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> and you always came through smiling. Um, but the, the most, the most, um, most memorable thing that I saw you stretch beyond the, the call of duty, and that was the leading role in my film, um, Walking by Faith, which is now, baby, I wish I could high five you. It's now over like 23,000 views, like some mm -hmm. views on Facebook. Right, like seriously, the trailer. That's just the trailer, bro. That's the trailer. Um, <laughs> but, but you, <laughs> you, you came through to every um, role, you know, every position. You hardly ever called out. You were very disciplined. Um, even when you didn't understand a role or what you were supposed to do, you asked questions. And then you killed it. Like, it, you, were, you were a natural because you played the role of my husband in this film. And it was a, it was a depiction of my life about being homeless. So we had you in the hood. Tell them, tell them, Keith. <laughs> you was carrying bags. You was, it was like whatever. You know, it was a real reflection of what we were going through. Um, and you were alongside of uh, an actress named Meek Meek, who is also brilliant. And you guys, 
bruh, you killed it. You know what I'm saying? You killed it. And I could see the acting bug waking up in you, you know, at that moment. So I, I just, that's my most memorable of you, like watching you come and just kill them scenes. You know, you even played um, a role where my husband had had a stroke. So you had oh to be God. sick. Yeah. I was like, woo. And, and it's crazy oh. how that trailer is at over 22,000 views. And I'm like, wow, that's, that's the trailer, bro. Right. Name of the film. <laughs> we ain't even got to the meat of the film yet. Like, so what we're waiting on now is my husband actually works a regular job now. So we're waiting on him to get some inspiration to bring this film together and sit down and edit it. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, you know, putting all that together because it was a lot of scenes. So um, you were a father in that role. You were, you know, we went through transition of homelessness where we didn't have anything. We stayed in a hotel. Um, we actually got a, sh a chance to shoot a scene in a hotel. Um, you played a role with my godmother. You know what I'm saying? All of that. It was like, I was like, he is killing it. And a couple of scenes, it got so intense that I cried. Remember the one in the hotel um, out there and y'all had to kind of come hold me because it was so real. Those scenes were so authentic. I was like, oh my God, I could feel myself. Um, I could see my life through you guys acting it. And I was like, oh, you know, and I just, I just broke down because it was almost like I had to relive it again you know, through your acting eyes. So I just wanted to say I appreciate you stepping into position at that time and taking on the role of my husband in this film. It was crazy. Crazy. <laughs> Cheers to you. <laughs> yeah. Where can we view the trailer? Where can it be viewed? Oh, where can we find it? Um, what I'll do after this live is I'll go back and I'll tag you in it so that they can see it on right. your page and my page. But it's on it's on Facebook actually. Um it's over twenty some thousand views. I'm like <laughs> you know. <laughs> and it's only been what like a uh, like two years maybe at the most. So it's not bad. Um it, it's That's gotten a lot of traction and um it, it starts the scene starts with you getting the divorce paperwork out the mail. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, wow, that is intense. And I, I just I, I just say cheers to you on that. You you did an amazing acting job, you know, for that role. I wish I could <laughs> 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 Okay. No, I yeah, so. I, so I remember getting that phone call and you said, I need you to play this role in the movie. I said, I don't act. And then I was like, well, how am I supposed to act like I've never done this before? And then he was like, well, walk you through it. And I'm like, all right, where do you need me? <laughs> right. You don't back down from challenges at all. You know what I'm saying? You you did it. I, it, it was just something about you that you had that, uh, you were dark skin, which my husband is dark skin. My real husband in real life is dark skin. Um, that, that. That that fade on your your face, you know what I mean. <laughs> you had that, yeah. <laughs> you just you you seem like you could, you would walk into his shoes and really really take that role, and that's what I saw in you from a from a distance. I had been watching you for a while, so um, I was not surprised that you killed it like that. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> so let me ask, let me ask, let me ask a question. So, what was your inspiration of getting into the entertainment industry? Okay, that's a good, that's a great question. Um, this journey started for me 20 something years ago. Um, I, I started in my early 20s. And uh, I, I started the business with my ex husband. And our first venture was uh, managing a singing group called Remix. And it wow. segued into wow. other things like we were out there on tour with them doing all this stuff. And then we end up deciding to create our own magazine called 77 Magazine. Okay. And at that time, oh my God, I didn't know how legendary that magazine was. We were just kind of in the moment. 
Um, and back in the day, you just kind of went with it. You went with the networking. You went with the flow of everything, right? And um, and plus, I was young. So why not try it? You know, my ex designed the cover and designed the entire uh, layout of the magazine. And I was the one that did the story. So I was the writer, editor-in-chief. And um, I interviewed our subjects. Taraji Henson, by the way, came through our tutelage. Um, we had the boys remix that I told you about. They were on one of our covers. My brother did a cover for me. We'll talk about that. Um, also, Atheon Crockett. Um, oh, wow. my God. And I'll never forget the day I interviewed Taraji Henson. It was right after she shot Baby Boy. And she sat down with me in Hollywood at this restaurant called Chin Chin's and gave me her exclusive. And she, at that moment, she had said she had just come to California with $700 in her pocket as a single mother. And right before Baby Boy, she had just got her first agent. So she landed Baby Boy. That was her beginning. Like she was telling me, you know, things like in that interview that she was a she was really, really shy because she had to get chest naked in the scene. And she was like, your brother was so good with me on screen. And you know, <laughs> she was telling me it was, it was so interesting. And I just remember her being so sweet, just a sweetheart. Cat Williams, he used to host some of my talent shows back in the day. I didn't know that. Yeah, I got so much to tell you, like. It started back then, 20-some years ago. Like, we just in L.A. doing it, like, hitting the scene, going to all the clubs, um, doing all these events like the BET Awards and all that stuff, and just, you know, doing our promotion thing. Um, I didn't know it was going to lead into a career under media, that category media. Um, but right. I, I got inspired from just getting out there and trying it and it, it just took shape if you know what i mean it evolved into other things so but whoa taraji i still uh, think about that today she now has a star on the walk of fame um and here it yes. is 20 some years ago i interviewed her um and i actually i well we'll talk about that too <laughs> my books and all that we'll talk about that because I, I i wrote her in my i wrote the story inside of my my book um, it's called Queen G Media Course, The Journey. And I talk about, you know, my time with being a young journalist in the business and what those experiences were like. I talk about Cat Williams, Atheon Crockett. I even interviewed, hell, the bailiff on Judge Judy. We was all on the set of Judge Judy, like back in the day, like all on the set, all access. You feel me? <laughs> I'm asking them, like, I'm asking, his name is Bird. Like, the guy that stands next to her, is, his name is Bird. And I, I used uh, to ask, I was asking him stuff like, so what is it like being out here every single day, you know, standing next to Judge Judy? What's the worst you've experienced, you know, with being on the set here? And, like, we got to eat with the crew. Like, it was cool, bro. It was magical. <laughs> so. So let me ask you, so you... You have a lot of experience in the media industry. You, you're an author, you're a singer, you're a writer, you're a director, you're a, you're a manager, you're a host, you're, you're a report. You do like everything, like pretty much like hats on. How do you balance right. that with your family and being a wife? Wait, ask that one more time because one part blinked out. <laughs> so how do you balance all your hats? with your family while being a wife and a mother? Um, it, it just, you know what? I've been a mother all my life since I was 14 years of age. Um, I was a teen mother. So the motherhood aspect of me falls naturally. It's like from the time I looked up at my first child, I knew what I had to do. And that has not changed. Um, now the wife role and doing this full-time and being a full-time wife, you know, he flows with me. I would say to everybody, you have to have somebody next to you that is a friend first. And mm -hmm. um, you know that, you know, you know my husband personally. So mm -hmm. if you look at us, 
you can tell we're good friends. Right. Like, yeah. <laughs> our friendship is amazing. Right. Like, I can tell right. him anything. You know what I'm saying? Um, without limits or feeling like I'm under pressure. And then I, 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 as a wife, do what I have to do to take the load off of him. So if I got to cook, if I got to take out the trash, whatever I got to do, I step into wow. my position. Wow. So Queen G does take out the trash. <laughs> you understand me? Because <laughs> some people got issues with these different roles and what we're supposed to do. I'm like, Shh, I'm going to do what I got to do. You know what I'm saying? To make happy. our home happy and healthy and to cultivate our friendship. I, I really, really believe that friendship and communication is on the top of the list when it comes to that. And another thing is he does not get in the way of what I love to do and vice versa. I don't get in the way of what he loves to do. Um, we support each other in our endeavors. And that that's what has made the difference, even with my imagery on social media and all that, because he's a photographer and a videographer. Um, right. It's because of him that I've been put all over social media. Let's keep it real. Like, to wake up to paparazzi every single day, that shit is dope. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> Come on, babe. I know I'm, I got to get the drool off. Let's go shoot. You know what I'm saying? Nope. My payment system with him is different than the regular payment system of cash. Like... <laughs> We got our own little, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so um, I, just, I just really feel blessed. And that's how I juggle it all. Being really great friends with him, I love every one of my children. And the way that I handle them is to deal with them based on who they are. Wow. You know what wow. I'm saying? Wow. I have a set wow. of twins, but they're so different. Like, you, you could never put one in this category or that one in that category. You have to deal with them um, based on who they are. Wow. And, and wow. yes, being a mother has also taught me how to juggle 50 clients at one time. Like, how do you juggle 50 clients on top of a family, a kid, four kids, a husband, full-on business, you know, writing, all of that stuff? It's because my children teach me every day that every person is a different person, you know, and you don't treat one the way you treat the other. You got to individually, you know, evaluate the situation and treat it as is, period. So that's how wow. I do it. For you guys that are tuning in, you guys can ask questions throughout the topic. It looks like you're about to get a follow right now, <laughs> Queen G. Oh, this is great. Okay, okay. <laughs> right? So, yeah, so who was the most, like, influential person that you you interviewed or came across? Like, who was the one that was like, wow, like, I can't believe I met you? Um, I'm going to say to date, the one that was most impactful was Bushwick Bill. Wow. Bushwick Bill. I, I've interviewed a lot of people, but what made him the most influential interview is the fact that he told me his truth. Like, I didn't have to hear it from a sideline person or, you know, uh, hear his story from someone else's mouth. He came authentic. He told me, you know, even why he shot himself. Wow. Wow. He told wow. me about the incident of him. Um, once he shot himself, he was dead for a couple hours. And he was even toe tagged. But due to the fact that he had an urge to urinate, he woke up in the morgue and had to go pee. Wow. He was already on the, 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 the bed, like the death bed with the tag on his toe. Wow. And, wow. um, yeah, so that exclusive right there to this day still blows me away. 
Um, and then I just felt like by the way he interviewed with me, almost like he was invincible and that nothing can happen to him. Like that's how he kind of came across. Like I am, I am the chosen one. You know what I'm saying? I've been through it all. And I'm from, <laughs> I'm from, um, I forgot what country he was from, but he, um, he talked about, you know, being birthed into the world where his mom almost lost him from birth, you know, and coming mm. into the world ambidextrous too, being able to use both hands and his disability. He talked about all of that. Can you imagine before Bushwick Bill took his last breath, like I got his real story? <laughs> and you, this things you don't even think of, like when it happens, you're like, like you're speechless. It, right. And even like, no more way. today, like it's even more legendary today than it was even then, because now he is, um, he is, uh, went on, you know, to another world. I, I transitioned. And I'm like, wow, he actually gave me his story. And he said that my interview style was so different than everybody that had ever interviewed him because wow. I didn't come in there asking him about the hip hop game and his albums and all of this stuff. I asked him about purpose, you know, why he felt like he survived the bullet wound, you know, and, and what is it that he, he was left here to do. Like if you survive something like that and it went through your brain, it grazed his brain. Come on now. And you were already dead and you woke back up. Like that is, it's something for you to do. Like you didn't just wake back up for nothing. You know what I'm saying? Perch. Right. And when it's over, it's over. As you can see, he's gone now. Right. Like it's over now. You know what I'm saying? But he said, he said the reason why he felt like he woke up, and I'll never forget this response, he said that it was because there was no one else that would be able to describe the pain for real, for real. That, that was a painful wow. incident in his life. He did it to sacrifice for his mom. You know what I'm saying? He felt like if he took himself out um, and committed suicide, that she would get blessed, not understanding that suicide is not you know, fundable through insurance. But he, he said he couldn't, he couldn't put that concept together in his mind. You know what I'm saying? Um, all he knew is that he thought he was sacrificing for his mom. And he said she gave him life. So why not? He read a scripture before he did it, before he shot himself. And um, I, I just, that was, that was it. I put that actual story in my book. His actual words are transcribed in my book. Wow. Oh, by the way, Keith, you in the book too. You in the book too, bro. You in here too. <laughs> you are in here. Your um your your actual um I think you submitted a a statement for me or something. I remember that. And then I wrote you also in Let's Go to Work. That chapter. So you're in. You're in my book, bro. The same one with Bushwick. Look at you. You guys got to go get this book. Where can they find it? It's on Amazon. All of my books are on Amazon. I'm an author times eight. Um, I have four children's books on the market and four autobiographies. And I co-wrote two other stories. Um, wow. So I have a I have a fiction story that I co-wrote with a guy um, that designed all my covers. And it's about a chick who, uh, oh, it was so much fun to do that damn book. That book was fun. Because I could let my imagination run wild, you understand? But it's about a, a chick named Charmaine who grows up in the foster care system. She ends up uh, moving away to Atlanta to try to find a better life, but ends up running into trouble. Her dude ended up being a, um, a pimp. Wow. Yeah, so wow. it's that story right there is called Hood Rich. That story good as hell. Like <laughs> I still be I still be like, how the hell did we write 16 chapters in two weeks? Because I was so engaged with him in this book. We went back and forth and wrote that book. 
he would write some, I wrote, he would write, I would write. And I was like, before I knew it, we looked up, it was two weeks in, we done, bro, 16 chapters. <laughs> Inspiration at its finest. <laughs> that book was, that's, that book is so good. Like, um, and, and again, because I had been writing all these autobiographies, which was my own story, it felt good just to let my imagination go wild. Um, even the kids' books that I have, um, I co-authored them with my children. So it was inspired by them. They gave me the actual ideas, and wow. I just created wow. a story based on their ideas. Um, so it's, it's that. Keithan, you're looking at the same Queen G that just left. I just left Vegas, bro. Yeah, like you just told me you were leaving it. And I said, right. <laughs> These are the actual book. Like they on Amazon. They are published, bro. They are published. This is not a game. Like I'm not just up here saying that. Like I'm shocked myself. That's why I'm sounding like this. <laughs> Cause look, you know me. Like come on now, <laughs> you you. <laughs> She's on it. She's on it. Like you know the crazy thing is, like I still remember, like. I'm like, when I met you, like, even after I met you, I'm like, I don't understand how she does this, keeps the grind, keeps the humble, stay hungry, has a family, is a wife, and still does so much stuff. And, and I always tell my friends, like, you know what I mean? Like, every time somebody gives me an excuse about doing something, I'm like, no, no, no. I know somebody who's actually doing that. You know what I mean? Like, right. it's a blessing to hear from your mouth to let people know that regardless of what your situation may be, regardless of how you are right now, the state of mind, you can always create something through that and you can still keep the grind, you know what I mean, while still maintaining who you are and the things around you. And, like, that's the inspiration, you know what I mean, that you can't – it's, it's, it's one of those things where you have to, like, look at somebody's actions, like, to understand this, because me telling them is like, okay, Keithan, obviously, what are you talking about? But I'm like, yo, if I introduce you to her, like, y'all don't understand. Like, I don't know how she, she does it. So now every time somebody gives me an excuse, I'm like, look, I'm sorry, I don't know what to say. But I know you can do it, because I've seen somebody who can do it. Right, and, and they are now calling me um, an influencer. Um, that's the word that people use in this day and time. I tell everybody, if you know how um, a tree is planted and the roots, before the tree even springs up, the roots go long and deep. People don't know the journey. They don't understand how long I have been planting my feet in this industry. There's a kid named Holmes Lindsay IV that is on the hit show Power. He played wow. a character wow. named Tiny Maniac. I cast that kid in his first film. You understand me? There's a, there's a gentleman by the name of Vincent M. Ward who um, is known for the show Walking Dead. That brother came to my casting doors as well. We used to hang out. Me and you, Vincent Ward used to hang out. Um, there's a beautiful lady by the name of Kiki Haynes Bell on um, a hit show with Tyler Perry called For Better or For Worse. I managed her. I managed her acting career. Bruh, like, I, let me tell you something. <laughs> the reason I don't give up is because the people I've interviewed, have, they now got to start on the Walk of Fame. What the hell? Wow. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, wow. bruh, like, it's attainable. It's attainable. All of these things are attainable. We all can have what we desire and what we put our minds to. Seriously. I never to this day would think that I would be an author of, my signature is actually on 11 books because I started with a series called Faces of Rap Mothers last year in July. Um, it's a series with women in hip hop. That's the book I started with, which gave me the motivation I was like, if I, I could write in somebody else's damn book, I can write my own. Like, what's, <laughs> what's the point of just writing some, you know, a chapter in somebody else's book? I can write my own. So when I tell you, bruh, 
I sound like this because I am still pinching myself. Like I am in shock every single day. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to come out with my ninth book. I just finished. I'm in the middle of editing it right now. These are all self-written, self-edited. Um, I do have a team, though, that helps me to create the covers, um, that helps me to put them in book format. I have a team that helps me to do that part because I didn't, I didn't wake up smart like that, graphically smart. So uh, when, when you cannot do something, you have to access a team to help push you through. But they all have to be like-minded. The way that I was able to accomplish doing nine books since November of 2019, not before that, bruh, November of 2019 is when my first book went on, up on Amazon. The way that I have been able to accomplish that is to have an amazing team that says, when, when we need to go, let's go. They got to be on the same mindset. You cannot have people to slow you down. Like you got to work like a train, not like a slug. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> Bottom line. Right. That is the way it happens, you know, period. And when you get that team in place, you cherish them. You take care of them. I take care of my team well. I make sure that they get paid because they are making something happen for me that was just in my mind. Right. You understand? Right. They have helped me to make this attainable. I now have, oh my God, this is just, it's unbelievable. I just left Las Vegas, bro. I, I, it ain't been that long. Like, fuck COVID-19. Like, bro, it's been, <laughs> like, <laughs> we've been over here focusing, you know what I mean? <laughs> everybody can do whatever they put their mind to. That's what I'm here to tell everybody tonight. Like, it, it don't matter, you know, uh, See, and, and tell them, can you tell them who my brother is so we can have that conversation real quick? Uh, I think that's so, important. Yeah. <laughs> so for those that do not know that Miss Queen G's brother is the infamous Tyrese Gibson. Yes, Tyrese Gibson, that's the singer of Sweet Lady. He's in the Fast and Furious, the trilogy. He does everything black and blue. Yeah. Yes, Tyrese Gibson is her brother, official blood brother. For those that didn't know, this is time right. to get And the only reason why I had you to bring that up, because once people find out, they, they ask questions about that. Wow, you have a person that is worldwide famous. How do you handle that? And how do you deal with the pressures? Those are like the questions, you know? Um, right. What I learned through this whole journey that is that it is very important that I find my identity. And Amen. I have to sit into my own tub, if you know what I mean, and, and walk in my own shoes. Um, he has done very well. And when I tell you I'm proud of him, I just ordered his book, uh, Manology, and I'm waiting on it to come in the mail. So I support... I support my brother tooth and nail, but we both understand that we are in our own lane and it's different lanes. You know what I'm saying? And we're okay about that. You know what I mean? Right. People be like, dang, well, do we be, you know, hooking you up? And that's, that's the, these are the questions, you know? And I'm <laughs> like, I'm grown. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> He's you know, not going to fund my life forever or whatever. Like I'm grown. You know what I mean? <laughs> so. I remember this story, and I remember the day when I told you I went to the BET Awards, right? And then I went to the BET Awards solo, and then I ended up meeting people. And then they told me that Tyrese was having, like, this crazy uh, BET party. And so I remember waiting in line. I was with the girls. The girls ended up getting in. I didn't. Obviously, I'm a guy, right? Don't have any connections or any pool. <laughs> 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 So you got that industry like, swag too. <laughs> so, I appreciate it. so we just sitting, we're just sitting uh, outside. There's a bunch of guys, and then Tyrese comes out, and he's like, "I don't know why y'all standing there, because they ain't want y'all getting there, right?" And then so I tell, 
I ended up doing this thing with Queen G. I forgot what project he was doing. And then I told you the story. You was like, yo, we was literally sitting in there the whole time. And that's how I was, we were just like meeting each other. And I was like, ain't that crazy? Like, we could have met each other again. Like, like it could have just been like, that's the crazy part. Like, I'm yeah, sure yeah, that. he had this thing for a season where um, he kind of held the men outside for a minute and let all the ladies in. The club mentality, you know, they let the ladies in, you know, <laughs> so that it can it can be a draw because he gives these huge parties at his home sometimes. He just had Scotty yeah. Pippen at his crib the other day, two days ago. Legendary yeah, Scotty know. Pippen and his kids. <laughs> and oh my god I have seen everybody at this crib Dame Dash um, who else uh, Tank of course oh, Vin Diesel hey sis you know what I mean <laughs> it's crazy like seriously I met Akon at my brother's crib Snoop Dogg um, everybody's over there Wiz Khalifa Everybody hangs out at my brother's crib. Like, it's it's super cool because, um, and one time I almost got into it with Keisha Cole. Like, oh, yeah, but I'll tell you about that off camera. I'll tell you about okay, that okay. off camera. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so let me ask, let me ask. So with all that being said and everything that you do done through, what would you like to leave the people that are tuning into this? Like, what, what do you live by that could possibly help another person? Uh, my, my, my model, I'm going to say model, the model that I use and that I stick to is create a lane, period. Wow. Create a lane. That's my word. And when I say that, a lot of times doors are not open for you. They're not just open. You're right. So uh, what do we have to do? We have to break those doors down. And it doesn't matter who I'm related to. It doesn't matter what position, role, how long I've been doing this. I still have to break these doors down. What did I do with you? I was like, look, when can I get on there? I'm still, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, trying to open other opportunities for other platforms. You know what I'm right. saying? It doesn't matter how small or how big or whatever. Like, I am still hungry, like you said. Uh, but that's my motto I live by. Create a lane. Create it. It does not exist for you all the time. So you got you to gotta break those doors down. You got to make that situation wow. happen. You know what I'm saying? Um, no one just hands you success. Success is earned. So that's what I live by. And I still, I get up every day um, hungry. I've been preparing for this podcast, your podcast, all day. I got my hair together, you know what I mean? If we got to do it at home, then so be it. Get me together because I know Keith going to be sharp. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going to go before Keith and not be sharp myself. <laughs> so <laughs> I've been prepping. And you got you to gotta stay like that. You know what I'm saying? You don't know who's watching this. Exactly. I agree. You know what I mean? Um, create a lane. That's my motto. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you, Queen G, for tuning in. See, I know we could talk we could talk for a good two hours, but right. for my last for my last discussion, I realized that they cut us off in an hour. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right. So I'm like, right. So we could, you know, we could talk. I ain't even worried about that one. Dang, but it's I been, really see, it's been, okay, it's been 40 some minutes already. I ain't, I don't even feel it. <laughs> if, anybody, if anybody have any questions, you guys can drop questions down. Just in case you have anything specifically that she wants, that she can answer. Um, I do have one more question for her for me personally. Um, as a black woman in the entertainment industry, how do you find your place as a as a black woman in the entertainment industry? Is it harder? Is it easier? Do you have to create more? Do you have to work harder? Like, how does that work for you? You do have to work hard um, because 
my my thing is for me, my seven heartbeats, which is my children that I placed on the earth, they are my motivation. I have to get up every single day and do it for them. I feel like now at this point, I am nearing 50. I'll be 50 in a couple of years. Um, and with that being said, there is something for me to leave on the earth for them. That is why I co-wrote books with my children, because I feel like, you know, they are learning through this process. The legend is I'm teaching them step by step on how to become an entrepreneur. I am teaching them what it is like to sign your own product, you know, and be excited about something that we work so hard for, creating their own platforms. They have now been booked for a magazine called Junior Billionaires that's getting ready to be released. Um, so it's starting for them. The ball is starting for the children. You understand? Um, and, and, and this is what you do. You hands-on, you leave a legend by doing it hands-on. Um, and, and that's why I work so hard. That is why I get up every single day. People think I'm in competition with them. And I'm like, you don't understand. Before I can even compete with you, I got seven heartbeats. I have a husband and three grand heartbeats. I'm a grandmother. You understand? Wow. So I'm not sitting here in competition with anybody. I would say to everybody, make you better and make you greater and compete with your own levels. That is enough for me. You know what I mean? I don't have to compete with other people because I'm trying to outdo what I did yesterday. And that's a lot of, I'm very competitive in my own right in that sense. Like making better out of tomorrow than what I did today. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and that's important for me. So when you see me in these zones, that's what I'm doing. I'm like on the court like Jordan by myself. Like, hey, what, what, what move we finna make next? Come on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> What's the next step? So Jay Natural had a question, I think. Jay Nacho, you should have tuned in in the beginning. <laughs> what made you get into the industry? I think you went over that. That was the first question. Yeah, we answered that, but I can, I can tell them. Uh, it started with a, a singing group that I managed back in 20-something years ago, and then I became a journalist with a magazine uh, that me and my ex-business partner had together. And I interviewed people like Taraji Henson, uh, my brother, my brother did an interview with us too back then, and graced the cover. Um, all kind of people came through our tutelage with that magazine. It was called Seventy Seven Magazine. So that's how I started. That was my start in the industry. We we understand Jay Natural, man. We we get it. <laughs> I interviewed well, Mr. Jay Natural several times too. That's my boy. Thank you for tuning in, bruh. <laughs> well, with all that being said, Quincy, I appreciate you coming on the show. You know, you, you, you're the example of excellence. You're the example of hard work. You're the example of perseverance, the example of creativity, and you're an example of a gold winner mentality while still having the love, the care, and the nurturing spirit within you. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's just crazy how we met from a storm that happened outside that made us not have that photo shoot that lasted the whole session until you arrived to combining our photo shoot. <laughs> like, right. Shout out Cami Flowers. Shout out Cami yes. Flowers. That's how we met through camp, through, uh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> You're so right. <laughs> I remember that day. Like, she told me, she said, she said, Oh man, she's like, do you guys want to stay? And I'm like, I don't know. Like, I gotta ask my boy because he's over here. He flew in, and then we were like, well, I have another client at one, and then I'm like, who's this client? And she's like, well, I really can't say because I don't really want to give out the details. And then you came in, and I was like, well, who is she? And then you introduced yourself, and I was like, this lady's cool. And then you're like, you need to come and do an interview at the green room, and I said, I'm down. Let's go ask this. <laughs> And we up in there emotional and crying, and, you know, it was crazy. That was the start of us. That was the beginning. Thank you, Cammie, for, you know, setting up that photo shoot because destiny made, met purpose, and we end up, you know, developing a really great friendship after that. So we want to 
give credit to where it's due, you know, and um, acknowledge people that brought us together. And that was a that was a very spontaneous meet that we had no idea. And, and here we are end up, you know, destiny met purpose, period. You, right. you know, and then from that so, point on, I you introduced me to a lot of things, so I was grateful. And I'm always appreciative. And you know I'm always here to support. So once this pandemic is over, I'm telling you, I already told you, I'm going to fly down. I'm flying down. <laughs> I'm flying down. <laughs> I got I'm you, bro. Gonna... I got you. <laughs> but I appreciate and when you, you get a chance, um, think about possibly taking my media course because I think iron sharp, sharpens iron. I think that would be very helpful um, when it comes to the next levels that you're getting ready to go with the podcast you have. So we'll talk about that later off of camera. But I just, I've been teaching um, Zoom uh, media courses. And, and yes, I think that I think you need to come through my class, bro. <laughs> I have nothing to do. <laughs> right, 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 right. So. Anyway, <laughs> but I, I am so grateful. Up. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Stay tuned, you guys. If you guys need to see the video, we will be reposting the video after it's downloaded. So that way you guys can tune in. This was a very inspiring, emotional connection interview. And I know me and Queen G, we can go for two hours, but Instagram right. will not allow us. <laughs> So it will be reposted so that way you guys have the opportunity to see it. But thank you, Queen G, for coming on to Wine Talk. You're a blessing. Yes. You're hope. You're inspirational, and I love you. I love you, too. Thank you so much for having me on your podcast. I am so grateful that we got a chance to do this. And um, I definitely want you on one of my platforms soon. Let's talk to you, too. I got you, bro. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Get your outfit together, because I know you're going to be sharp. I know you're going to be sharp. <laughs> they just opened up some stores. So <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but thank you. thank you. No problem. I appreciate you guys for tuning in. Thank you, Jay Natural. Thank you, um, Don Panic Mass. Everybody that tuned in, True Jim. Everybody that's in here, I appreciate y'all. Share this video um, and follow me. Oh, follow me on Queen G Live Experience. All platforms. Yeah. Queen G Live Experience. I'll write it in here for everyone. And also, if you're interested in purchasing any of my books, um, you can find that on Amazon under Shante Gibson. I have children's books out as well as four autobiographies. And I'm going to write my name down will, here, too. And I will be posting it on my social media after this interview, so that way you guys can have the link, so that way you can go on there, you can follow, you can buy, support to support, and so that way you can get everything going. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. All right, I'm going I'm to jump off. <laughs> I Blessings, it. bro. I, <laughs>